Isn't it very dangerous to tamper with God's law? Oh, friends, we're not working in cooperation with God and His Spirit when we push aside one of the commandments. Jesus said, Whosoever shall teach men to break them will be spoken of as least in the kingdom of heaven. Number 14. Why did God make the Sabbath anyway? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. You know, if you go to Revelation chapter 14, the first angel's message challenges us to fear God and worship Him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now, in Revelation, we're going to have a study. It's coming later. On the seal of God. Are you aware that everybody gets a mark? Everyone says, I'm just not going to get the mark of the beast and I'm going to make it. If you read Revelation, friends, you're going to find out everybody gets marked one way or the other in the last days. One group is marked in the forehead with the mark of the beast, in the forehead or the hand. Another group is marked with the seal of God. Now, I hope it's clear that folks aren't going to all be running around tattooed in the forehead in the last days. This is symbolic of something. What is a seal? You know, a seal represents three things. Territory, title, and position. The name. Uh, president gives a speech, and Bill Clinton, for instance, would say, President Clinton, president's his title. Bill Clinton's his name. United States of America is the territory. Nebuchadnezzar had a seal. Nebuchadnezzar, his name, king, his title. Babylon, territory. You know, in God's law, in the longest of the commandments, in the middle of his law, you find, for in six days, the Lord, that's his name, created, made. That's his job. He's a creator and the sustainer. The heavens and the earth. The identifying characteristic of who God is, is in the Sabbath commandment. How many countries of the world have laws that say you're not supposed to perjure and lie? You're not supposed to kill. You're not supposed to steal. You've got to honor your parents. All kinds of these laws, the Ten Commandments are the best foundation for any government. But the Sabbath separates you as a Christian from just governmental law. It tells that you are worshiping your Creator when you keep the Sabbath. You're not just a citizen of a kingdom here, you're a citizen of a kingdom there. Amen? It does make a difference, friends. Number 15. How important is Sabbath keeping? Well, you know, God only did a few things in the beginning. When He made man, He made food for man. He made the Sabbath. The Bible says the Sabbath was made for man. Everything God made in the beginning was good, good, very good. Why would you do away with or change something that is so good? Everything God established in the garden was perfect. Never needed changing. Number 16. How does God feel about religious leaders who ignore the Sabbath? Very dangerous. You read there in Ezekiel 22. Her priests, speaking of his people, have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They put no difference between the holy and the profane. Oh, it doesn't matter what day you keep. You know, I heard about a minister who said for the communion service, the Bible says you're supposed to use unleavened bread and grape juice. He said they're just symbols, so it doesn't really matter. Why don't we use hamburgers and Coca-Cola? Well, that's blasphemy. Putting no difference between sacred and profane. And when someone says it doesn't matter whether it's the day God picked or the day we pick. Well, who's God anyway? Is he your Lord? Is he your king? Does he give the orders or do we make up our own religion? It says, and they have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I did a national TV debate. Not, I'm sorry, it wasn't national. It was uh, in Northern California. It was a... a, a uh, network TV in the area out there on the subject of the Sabbath and there were three ministers that went to church on Sunday good men their first argument was they were going to prove Sunday was the Sabbath well in about five minutes I asked them to produce a scripture and they didn't have any then they instantly changed gears and they said we're not supposed to keep any of the law because we're not under law they tried to get rid of the whole law just because the Sabbath was irritating them you know Mark Twain said something pretty profound a person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. You're asking, how come the religious leaders haven't noticed these things? How come the religious leaders in the time of Christ did not recognize He was the Messiah? If you're waiting for all of them to find out, you'll wait until it never happens. I had a friend when I lived in New York City that was a, a Christian. She wasn't real bright. And when they were getting ready to make a moonshot, 
She said, God's not going to let them go to the moon. And, you know, I didn't believe in God back then. And I, 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 was, I said, I think they're going to make it. She said, nope. The Bible says he's not going to let them go to the moon. Well, of course, I've never found that scripture. Millicent, I remember. Well, then, of course, after they landed on the moon and they got all the photographs and they got all the evidence and they showed it to the whole world and you can hear them talking from the moon, they bring back moon rocks and she said, it's a hoax, it never happened. I ran into some neo-Nazis that tell me that the Holocaust in World War II is a big hoax, it never happened. They don't want to believe it happened, as they say it never happened. They cover their eyes and they blind themselves. Now, I've been to the Holocaust Museum twice over there in Israel, and I've got news for you, friends. It happened. My Jewish grandparents have got friends that have tattoos and stories that will just make your blood curdle. It happened. The evidence is overwhelming. But some people, I've discovered, just choose to believe what they want to believe, and it doesn't matter how much evidence you give them. They say, I refuse to see it because I don't want to believe it. It's an inconvenient for me. Well, friends, do your soul some good. Make up your mind to do what's right, to believe what's true. Can you say amen? And do not go by what's popular. Do not even go by what's going to be easy. Something I've discovered. When you present a lot of Bible doctrines, some of the doctrines involve a change in the thinking. It's a lot easier to accept those doctrines. But when I present the Sabbath truth, I can hear the wheels turning. Just listen right now. You know what people are thinking? This makes sense, but if I believe this, what will it mean for me? What kind of changes? If that's the Sabbath day, that's going to mean adjusting. I don't know if I can afford to believe it. You hear that? Some people are making very dangerous decisions. Friends, let me challenge you. Don't worry right now about how you're going to deal with those things. If you're here, it's because God brought you. If it's true, cause it's because He loves you and He wants you to know. Worry about that later. But be honest with your own soul. Look at the Bible. Look at the Lord and say, Lord, it's true. Now what do I do? Amen? Be honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Lie to the whole world, but don't lie to yourself. No, don't lie to the whole world either. I'm just saying it's more dangerous to lie to yourself. Question number 17. Does Sabbath keeping really affect me personally? You know, God says He blessed and sanctified a period of time. And I can tell you testimony after testimony of how something separate and distinct happens every Sabbath day when by faith you acknowledge it is the Sabbath day. You know, some people walked into Jesus and bumped into Him and walked away and nothing happened. But when people touched Jesus in faith, they were healed. They received a very real blessing. If you enter into the Sabbath knowing it's the Sabbath, you're going to get a blessing. It's sanctified. It's holy. And it'll mean something for you. God will reveal Himself to you in a special, precious way. You know, Jesus said, Come unto me and I'll give you rest. The Sabbath is a reminder of the rest and the peace we have as Christians. Every week, we can rest from the cares of life. Can you say amen? So many people are missing mountains of blessings. They're losing a lot of joy because they're missing this commandment and all that it en encompasses. And I'd like to invite you, friends, to pray about how God would have you respond to this truth.